Poem 2 An Elementary School Classroom in a Slum by Stephen Spender This is a poem which talks about underprivileged children who, just by virtue of their birth in such families, suffer a kind of life which we will never want to live. Stephen Spender, a social activist, feels for them and writes for them. This particular poem is based in a slum. A school is there in a slum and how it operates. This poem is divided into four stanzas. The first stanza talks about the condition of the children who are there in the classroom. The second stanza elaborately describes the classroom. The third stanza talks about the condition of these children in their future if nothing happens substantially towards them or for them. And the fourth stanza, the poet establishes hope that if these children are given some opportunities, some education, they have capability, a potential to create a history for their own. So let's get into the poem. Far, far from gusty waves, these children's faces, like rootless wids, the hair torn round their pallor. So it says that far, far from the places that we live in, these children are living in slums, remotely from our places. And they exist as weeds. Weeds are the unwanted plants which grow of their own during spatially rainy season. And then the moment we get an opportunity, we just clean them off because they are of no use. So the poet compares these children with rootless weeds. And their hair are torn around their pallor. They are unkempt. They have no hair styling or any particular system. The tall girl with a weighed down head. There is a tall girl in the classroom which she has like her head on the desk because of the responsibilities she has back at home. The paper seeming boy with red's eyes. And there is a very thin boy whose eyes have bulged out. And it's said like rat's eyes bulging out. Then there's another boy, the stunted, the dwarf, unprop improperly grown, unlucky heir of twisted hair, bones, reciting a father's gnarl disease. And then there's another boy who has not grown fully. His bones are twisted. Why? Because he has inherited this from the father's disease, father's genes. He is reading his lessons from his desk. At the back of the dim class, one unnoted, sweet and young, there is one boy who is unnoticed and he is in his own world. His eyes live in a dream. He is physically there, but then mentally he is in a dream of squirrel's game in tree room other than this. So he is visualizing himself somewhere outside in a better position in the lap of the nature which is much much better than where he is right now. So this is the first stanza which talks about the different kind of students, the different kind of children who are there in the classroom with all sorts of deformities and problems, diseases. Moving into the second stanza, as I said, it describes the classroom. On sour cream walls, the cream, the walls which were painted white when they were inaugurated, the school was inaugurated, have turned sour, creamish. Why? Because nothing has been done after that. 
and on the cream walls what is there the list of donors donors who donate for the sake of their glory so that list is there who have donated for the school and then there's shakespeare's head a portrait then there's a picture which shows cloudless at dawn the early morning and there's no cloud it's sunrise civilized domes riding all cities the skyline of the cities are shown belled flowery tyrolis valley and then there's a picture of valley also tyrolis valley with its all beauties there's an open handed map awarding the world world its world the, for this children this whole thing is their world but there is another world there on the world map that is there on one of the walls and yet for these children these windows not this map their world because whatever they can see outside the window that is the only world available to them they have never seen this kind of world before so it is a world which is remotely present for them and this world is then one where all the futures painted with a fog there's no future for them in this world where it's foggy it's unclear it's hazy there's a very narrow street sealed in with a lead sky because in slums we have cottage industries with lot of smoke blowing out from the houses and the narrow streets in the slum when the sky is lit, uh, visible in a limited manner and that too is filled with smoke all these things are far far from rivers capes and stars of words whatever they are supposed to be there for these conditions are far far from whatever is possible for them moving into the third stanza surely shakespeare is wicked the map a bad example shakespeare has written very good stories his characters portray a very good lifestyle which these children have never heard about and when they hear of this they want to have them this map is a bad example why because it shows so many places which are completely different from where they are living in so shakespeare stories and these maps they tempt them they tempt these children to have those kind of lifestyles these things also project the ships and sun and love tempting them to steal they want all these things but they don't have any means to achieve them to have them so the only thing left out with them is stealing and that's what drives them towards the anti social activities and because of this only shakespeare is termed wicked and map a bad example from fog to endless night this is how their future is going to be they are going to steal they are going to indulge in anti social activities and this is how their life is going to end on their slag he these children wear skins peeped through by bones and spectacles of steel with mended glass these children live in the remote places of the city where the dump yard is there for the garbages where people don't frequent so they can live over there peacefully without any trouble or any issues created by the local citizens of the city so they live in that places which are unhygienic and hazardous but that's where they can live 
without being troubled by anyone and they are skinny their bones are peeping out of their skin there is no flash between the skin and the bones that says how malnourished they are and even the spectacles they are wearing they are all mended the glasses are broken then they just put a tape here and there and just manage with that why because they are very poor all of their time and space are foggy slum so blot their maps with slums as big as doom so this is how they are living and they seem to be a blot for the civilized so called civilized people like us we don't want those kind of people but still they exist and then they do exist because they don't have means to come out of those situations having taken us to this climax the poet in the last stanza expresses hope and optimism he says unless governor inspector visitor this map becomes their window and these windows that shut upon their lives like catacombs break or break open till they break the town so the poet says until and unless the people with some power the people who have capability or the means to take care of these people come forward and help them these people are doomed to stay like this but if they are supported if they are given help then this world can be available to these children also and they can come out of these catacombs the so called maze in which they are stuck and they can break open out of that and they can be in the town like any other like us and show the children when these children are shown the green fields and make their world run azure on gold sands and let their tongues run naked into books the white and green leaves open history there is whose language is the sun and then when they are provided with the opportunity of education they are nurtured they are trained they are tamed these children have the potential the capacity and the capability to create a history of their own and that's how they can come into the mainstream of population and contribute rather than just remain like a parasit parasite or as the poet says rootless weeds thank you